下午好，<笑>我叫 Carol， 啊<笑>、uh, ，我不懂啊、uh, 中文<笑> ，Sorry <笑>。So, um, my role、uh, at Google, I've been with Google for over five years, working with ad products,、um, and I'm the product specialist for the ad exchange for Asia Pacific. I work with the product team to look at the product needs in Asia, and、uh, for the product development in Asia Pacific. Um, today I'll be talking about technology from a publisher perspective, but my colleague Cindy Gao will talk about the buy side perspective because of the ecosystem. And I know we have publishers and buyers in the room today. So, when I was asked to speak about technological innovation, I thought about how far we've come, and I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but this is the first banner ad. That ran on the web, almost 20-year anniversary. So, and、uh, it shows how far we've come. This was hard-coded into the page. This was before ad servers, and this ad was by AT&T, and、uh, it was sold on time basis for three months.、Um, had a very big click-through rate, 44%. But there would have been contracts and negotiation to, to have that ad happen. Fast forward 12 years, and Uh, some of my colleagues don't know, but before I joined Google, I worked at Australia's largest media company, and I actually sold some display advertising myself. And、uh, one site I sold on was a job site. And back in those days, in 2006, it was still very new. It was educating advertisers, but it was a job ad on a job page. It was negotiated. It was contracts. It wasn't CPT, but we spoke about CPM as if it was CPT. So one million impressions in a week, and so anyone coming to this page, a jobs page, would see a job ad. And then fast forward to today, five years later,、uh, seven years later. So this ad was for me. I went to a competitor job board, and the ad that I saw was just for me. It was a site that I'd been to earlier, doing a bit of shopping, and they wanted to reach me again. So, this ad wouldn't have been booked with contracts and negotiation. It's aimed at me specifically. It's a job page, not that I was looking to leave Google, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a job page, but not a job job ad. It's about me, the person. So, we've really come a very, very long way. And the trajectory, the change in 20 years, and and how it's sped up, makes me wonder where we're going to be in five years' time. And that's what I like about working at Google. We tend to lead innovation.、Um, and so, what、um, when I look at where we've come and where we are at the moment, I see some of the key technological、uh, benefits right now in three main areas. So, firstly, we've got the DFP integration and uh, uh, ability to, to sell across products,、uh, uh, sorry, across formats, and、uh, and enjoy the benefits of programmatic premium as part of that.、Um, we've got controls and con and transparency, and finally protection. And I'll talk to each one of those. So, firstly, the DFP integration. I won't spend too long on this. You've heard about it a lot today, but I really want to stress that this is where we see the magic happen. So, if you look at the ad exchange, the ad exchange is designed to give the ad that will give、um, on an impression by impression basis the ad that will make you the most money in that impression. Then, if you look at DFP. That's designed to give you the ad that would make you the most money for that impression. If you combine the two and put AdEx in real time into DFP, you can imagine the power that that has. The ad exchange gives multiple ways of selling, and many publishers are familiar with this area: the open auction. And that's where you make the most money. There's a lot of demand. It's very fluid. 
they're also very comfortable with the other end, which is selling directly uh, through their own ad server. But there's much more room for development in this middle area. So firstly, very shortly in Asia Pacific, we'll be launching um, ad network optimization, the ability for you to bring relationships with other ad networks into the exchange to compete um, in, and, and be part of the demand pool. But what's really interesting is the what I call programmatic premium or programmatic direct, being able to have special opportunities that you set up special deals for with, your, with buyers and advertisers and, um, and, and really enjoying the product across a whole uh, variety of ways of selling. And this is the interface, it's in English, but this is the interface to show you how um, these programmatic premium deals are transacted. No contracts, no billing hassles, no, um, uh, at no trafficking in your ad server. You're negotiating just online and uh, setting up the deals. And what's really great is that, um, and as, oops, uh, as, as we were talking about earlier, um, your ad server, um, in, in some cases, there will be situations where you may have sold an ad directly at a CPM, but something in either the open auction or a preferred deal that you've arranged at a high CPM because of its high value could actually beat what you've sold it for directly. So to help you to um, recognize the value, um, uh, for the best value for each impression, in DFP you can actually allow it, you can allow these deals to be competing very easily, just the tick of a button, to let these ads compete with your direct sold inventory so you receive the most money from every impression. Controls. This is very important. Programmatic is, uh, is amazing. The, the demand that you have access to is amazing. But for you to sleep well at night, for you to be comfortable, you need controls. So inventory and pricing is an area um, uh, that you can control, as is uh, buyers and the ads, and, uh, and, and finally uh, uh, technology and, um, uh, and, uh, and data. And I'll um, talk to, to each of these. So um, with, the, uh, with pricing and inventory, you can set minimum CPMs. And those minimum CPMs aren't across the board. You can set those at even down to an ad unit level, or you can group ads together and set a minimum CPM. You can set minimum CPMs for different buyers or advertisers. You have a lot of control here. Finally, in data, you can, you can also um, uh, say that you're turning off, uh, you, you will not allow data collection or even change the settings so that um, no expandable ads can show or to accept expandable ads. They're just some small examples of some of the controls to manage this enormous flow of ads that are coming through to you. Oh. So categories is another area. So we have over 12, we've classified the ads into over 1,200 different categories so that at scale you can simply opt in or opt out. An example is if you had uh, maybe a section of, of your site or your network with younger viewers. Now they shouldn't see any, da uh, any dating ads. It's not really relevant. But if you want to be safe, you can, you can opt out of that, um, that category, for example. But that's a way of doing it at scale. But of course, you can also block on an advertiser basis or a buyer basis for, for individual, um, um, or of course, uh, an individual ad basis, which I'll talk about later. Transparency is also important. We like to show you what um, the activity has been uh, on your account in terms of programmatic. So we, we surface 22 different dimensions. And, and in fact, next year, um, so we're uh, very soon to launch a product, uh, well, launch a feature called the Query Tool, which will help you dive into data even deeper. So the Query Tool will have 38 different dimensions. Uh, that's going into beta in December. So publishers, I hope you uh, please try. Um, but uh, this is important for you to see um, how advertisers are valuing your inventory and, uh, and the different segmentations. Similarly, we also surface back to you 
what is happening in the market as a whole. So this is a picture of the ad exchange as a whole where you can benchmark. Yeah, you know, maybe you're considering having another ad unit on one of your pages, um, and by audience you want to see roughly what the CPMs are, and uh, you know, if you were, had a large audience in uh, America, for example, uh, you, know, you, you could look into that very easily and see what's happening on the exchange. And finally, protection. Now, I think this is overlooked often. I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of us get caught up with the money and yield, but this is very, very important, keeping your brand safe and keeping your users safe. So, yes, it's about money, but we've also built um, our system to look at speed, uh, but also at safety. So, uh, we look at the uh, brand protection. Um, the ability, and we've spoken a bit about that, and the, and the controls um, that you've got to um, uh, expose yourself on uh, to set your, uh, your controls in the system. Um, we've also got latency. We're committed to uh, having very low latency, which increases the number of bids that you can receive um, and increases your, your page loading time. And finally, uh, we've got user protection. Uh, so, malware and spam, I'm going to talk a bit about our efforts there because it is important. And uh, down the bottom we have, uh, my Chinese is not very good, <laughs> not, uh, thank you Henry, uh, not, uh, uh, being anonymous. This is very, very important and uh, I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about that soon as well. So, firstly, with our malware efforts, we scan every creative for malware. Every single creative we scan. If we find an ad with malware, we discard it immediately to keep the users safe. But what's more is that buyers, if they're found to pass us an ad with malware, face a suspension of over three months. We're serious about malware. We um, also don't allow fourth party uh, ad serving and we don't allow vendors that aren't um, sub syndication to vendors that aren't certified. Additionally, if there are creatives which we're concerned about, humans review those. And that's all before it hits your filters, your controls that you've already set up. I love this feature. This is the Ad Review Center. And this helps you to review your ads very, very quickly, and it leverages some of Google's search technology so that you can search by text for words you might not want, even applying to image ads. You can also upload images. Maybe it's your competitor. Maybe you want to upload their, their logo to just double check uh, to, to see if it's in any of the creatives. And we also have the creatives for review in order of impressions so that you're reviewing the most powerful, uh, the, the, the most uh, popular ads first and being effective with your time. You have the ability in the ad exchange to be branded, anonymous, or something in between, semi-transparent. And you can do this by buyer, by advertiser, you can control this. It may be even for uh, just one ad unit or for different sections of your inventory. You have many controls. But, for example, if you had a, your direct team was, uh, had a deal with, I don't know, Toyota or Coca-Cola, and you didn't want them to see you in China, you could be anonymous in China, but then be branded for any bids for them outside of China. So you have many, many controls, except I will note being anonymous, you're stripping out the value. A lot of people want to know what they're buying. So you're always going to be recognizing higher CPMs the more you'll expose about yourself. But you've got that ability to still receive ads and to participate in the exchange even anonymously. So in summary, RTB, uh, pro pro programmatic gives you so many benefits. And we've seen how RTB is growing. And I think um, we're going to see technology, uh, and, and Google is committed to continuing to, to drive um, uh, 
uh, opportunities in, in this area. But these are three key areas that I hope um, will give you confidence uh, when you uh, participate in the exchange because it is an amazing opportunity that is out there. It's even better if you can integrate it into DFP. Uh, but regardless, there are these controls which can manage it so you can safely and confidently participate. And we look forward to continuing to uh, drive further innovations in these and more areas in the future. But um, I will hand over to my colleague Cindy uh, for, for more. But uh, share, share.